hi guys welcome back i hope you are doing really well so in this video we will learn about shared bounds transition so it is a part of shared elements transitions in android that by compose so they are recently in the alpha release uh, so in the previous video i have covered up the shared element transition but here i will be covering up the shared bound transitions and we will be covering the difference between them right so let's continue with that so if you haven't watched my previous video you can check out that so that is the shared element transitions compose animations in that pack compose i will put the link in the description as well so that is about the shared element transitions here we will be covering about the shared bounds transitions right okay suppose uh, let me quickly uh, give you one overview of the items which you need to do before this so so i have added these two dependencies compose bomb alpha because we this, this is currently in alpha alpha stage so we need alpha compose bomb alpha versions right then i added the navigation compose but here we will not be using the navigation you can skip this part this one was added in the previous video right so yeah let's continue with this so first you can check out my previous video it's better if you check out that so that it will then it, this part will become easier for you to understand right i can show you the versions compose bomb alpha is this one and then navigation compose is this one and for compose bomb alpha we need to use the crispens right that is not the official one we need to use this from crispens compose bomb i have covered these points in previous video you can check out them right so let's continue with this so if you see this is just a simple suppose we have a some recipe menu right so currently we are just showing the it using the animated visibility right on clicking we are just showing some recipe we can show some recipe over here right so currently it's just a simple animated content so what is shared bounds and what is what are the differences with between shared element and shared bounds so shared for shared element we need we need to have few items which are like sharing the few things right suppose we have a list of users each list has like two points right so two items one is the image and second one is the title right if i am clicking on that list so it will be opening the uh, detail of that right so Im uh, image and title both of them were shared between the detail and list screen right so they have shared elements that's why that's called shared element but here you'll be covering shared bounds so shared bounds means bounds of the container right so here these bounds we'll be sharing just these bounds we don't don't need to like uh, have the any kind of shared elements between the two types of contents right suppose one is this one another one is this one so you can see there is nothing common between them right so whenever there is nothing shared so we can use shared bounds it, it it don't require like any kind of shared elements right it just works on the shared area right so shared bounds so these bounds will be automatically scaled then to this another uh, menu content right so we will be checking out how we can do that right again i will be saying if you have not watched out my previous video just go and watch out that i will put the link in the description so that is about the shared element transitions in compose so yeah you can check out that then it, this video will be become better to understand it will become easier to understand right so if you see um, here what we have used is this is just a simple uh, composable here we are just using the box and this is just the text and this is just simple animated content inside animated contents we have two uh, types of contents one is the recipe menu this is the button and this one is the content right on clicking will be showing this to show details right so 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 now what we need to do is so these two composables we have so we need to animate between these two composables right again if you remember uh, from the previous video so if you have watched my previous video you will be like knowing about what are the steps for doing that so first we need shared element transition shared transition scope sorry shared transition scope another one is animated content scope these two scopes are required right again i will not go into the detail of this because you can check out that video and you will get to know why we require them right and these two scopes we require in another composable as well right and 
the content we on which we want to apply the transitions they need uh, to be wrapped in shared transition layout right all these points are covered in the previous video you can check them out so yeah this this is the kind of wrapper which is providing us the shared transition scope which is required for this uh, transitions right so again we can opt in because these are in experimental stage and now we need to pass the scopes right so share transition scope will be the this and this and animated content scope so basically this this here this is like this will be provided by if you see this this, this one it assume, assume like so inside this animated content scope this is the animated content scope and this one is from this right this at the rate yeah right from this layout this of this layout right and this one is the its parent just its parent is this one but if we have two they are nested uh, lambdas so then one of them we need to require with at the rate annotations right and need to pass them here as well right this is the first step we need to add this wrap up uh, the layout zone which you want to apply transition with this transition layout so then we need these two scopes and then finally what we need to do is here we need to use these transition scopes right for both of them so basically we we will be using them here for using the shared bounds right so basically shared bounds is kind of a container transformation you can think of it like we, this is the container it will work on whole this container this container will be like transition transformed right so i'll be showing you that how we can do that so first of all what we need to do is so for using that scope we can use the with right and this one is not needed so let's wrap this up because where we want to use i have covered these points in the previous video again i will be saying that because we want to where we want to use this scope we can wrap those with this with block right and then this will be available right here so if you see so if you see so now on this uh, so this is the recipe menu right so here inside this row we can apply it on this row yeah this this row actually right these, these are just the kind of paddings and other things so here what we need to do is suppose we want to apply it here so what we can do is uh, share bounds right so again it, it it also requires the same things like animated content scope and we need to remember the shared content state as well so if you see and its key will be the unique key right so we can add them as shared bounds animated visibility scope will be animated content scope right and then what we need to do is we can specify enter and exit transitions because they can be easily observed here that will be the difference between the shared element so shared element works on the target target content but this one works on the both both containers right this one and then it will be expanding on both right so we can use as of now just simple fade in fade out okay and then similarly so again one more point so these only these things these things will be taking advantage of this shared bounds modifier will be which will be applied after that so only they will be transformed right we need to keep a note of this thing so we need to keep remember this thing right so this one is first and then same things same so basically this key is this key this key should be on both elements on which we want to perform transitions right transformation sorry right 
so here again we'll be using the shared transition scope right so what we can do is let's first of all just copy that here and then pick it up okay and here again we need to apply so we will have to consider where we want to apply so we want to apply it on the size as well right so before size we need to apply it right so also that all these things will be transformed right they will be transitioned right so we have applied the this remember shared content state so this will be remembering the state of this shared transition so key will be the similar right with two containers if we are applying it on two containers or in case of list and details they will be similar for one list item and then from list item to detail item they will be the id or something will be unique there right so the key will be similar right otherwise mismatching will happen and transitions will not work right so yeah let's try to see how it goes yeah it's working if you see if you see this 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 container this this one is transforming to another big container yeah you can see and then it's going back right you can easily see that right so if you see whenever there is nothing common between the two uh, layouts right so we can think of applying the shared bounds but whenever something is common and that common thing on that common thing we want to apply transition then we can use shared element transitions right if you see it is working pretty fine so this is about the shared bounds transition you can use the shared bound transitions on some showing some pop-up on some floating action button menu items right so on on all these kind of items we can just use this there are many other scenarios as well like suppose we have some list of messages and just click on the message and showing the detail of the message so there also we can apply so these are few things where we can apply these so, so in the previous video we covered shared element transitions as well and if if you want to slow it down so again if you remember in the previous video as well i told you how we can apply the custom animation bounce transform and it will be like bounce transform right and again we need to opt in yep yeah and now here what we need to do is it will be the spring animation and we will be reducing its stiffness right let's make it slow so and again now next step will be we need to apply them on both of these right both of these levels okay let's try to run it yeah if you see now the speed is slow so bounce bounce issue, issue is happening there if you observe carefully spacing is a little bit different i guess yeah that's why this is happening so let's check it where this difference is happening background clickable this 66 from top and bottom right mm, okay and here also we have specified the top as 66 dp okay oh yeah i think yeah i forgot one thing resize mode scaling so we need to apply resize mode remeasure to bounce it will be like more smoother it will be remeasure it on every frame i guess so yeah let's try this one yeah if you see 
so that was happening just due to this resize mode yeah i forgot this point actually so my bad so this this one is needed so there are two types one is this scale to bounds and if you go over there if you see what is default scale to bounds right so this one actually calculate initially the target bounds and then just do the scaling so that's why those flickering is happening so but if we use this remeasure right so this this one is like in contrast to scale to bounds is a resize mode that remeasures and re layouts its child whenever bounds change right whenever bounds change so whenever they are changing on every frame it will be recalculating that's why it's more smooth right if you see it's looking really cool now so yeah that that's all about this shared bounds transitions i hope you have now idea about this both shared elements transitions and shared bounds transitions and so if you have got the idea so please please like and share it and if you are new please please do consider subscribing to my youtube channel i will be posting the content more content related to jetpack compose kotlin compose multi-platform kotlin multi-platform right so uh, that's all about this video i will see you in the upcoming video till then bye bye take care have a great time keep coding Thank you.